Hey everyone, welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. This is episode 31, and I am Michael McCarville. So let's jump right into the next project. So the next project is going to be a, another Walther's kit. Uh, it's a steel water tower. Now years ago, I had a brass version, almost exactly the same, and um, I ended up deciding that it was, I spent a lot of money on it, and I thought, man, what could I get for the same amount of money? So I sold it, and I got this. This is one of the kits that I got because I knew I wanted to replace what I had. So in addition to that, I got a couple other kits that um, we're going to build or we've already built. So let's just jump right in. So uh, episode 29 goes over basic kit building. If you haven't already viewed that and you need kind of a um, more introductory level uh, approach, I would definitely check that one out. But we're just going to jump right in and I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining things. So the goal of this is to populate the um, rail yard area, specifically the engine facility, and uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, build this and it's going to be in a Pennsylvania Railroad area. So most of the stuff that the Pensy had was generally uh, well maintained. So that tells us a little bit of, what, of our approach of how we want to build this kit. We're going to build it um, as is and we're going to follow the instructions. We're not going to do any kind of kit bashing on this. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of weathering, but mostly what we want to focus on the weathering is uh, we want to do some fading. So we're going to paint this a generic black, but we also want to heavily fade it. Um, we're going to assume that it gets painted regularly, but it does sit out in the sun. So that's going to be our weathering approach. We'll do a little bit of rust spots here and there, but generally it's going to be um, kind of a white fade that we apply to this. So looking at the instructions, um, most of the Walther's instructions are a couple of pages. Just the fact that this is a single sheet tells us that this is going to be a relatively simple kit build. So um, we'll refer to that again. But uh, our next phase is going to be to go through and clean up the parts on here. So we have two sprues this time. One sprue is essentially the body of the water tower. It looks like the top, the bottom, the sides. It looks like it's probably two tiers of sides and a center standpipe that goes into the ground. Um, and it looks like this is the ground section. So we'll also have pieces that run up the side. Um, refer to the picture so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So one sprue is essentially this piece and the other sprue uh, really isn't that many parts but since they're these support pieces take up a fair amount of space on the sprue uh, that's the reason why there's a second one. Um, and then the ladder and the legs so pretty simple. I don't really see a lot that is involved in this. So we're going to go ahead and just start and clean up all of the pieces. We're going to cut the pieces off the sprue. We're going to uh, uh, carve with an X-Acto knife or sand or um, file as we need to. And then once we have all the pieces, we'll organize them. And if, if you would rather leave the things on the sprues to stay organized, you know, that's totally fine. Um, I would say that that's fairly common. Um, I like to group the stuff as I um, get started because one of the things I don't like doing is cleaning up the stuff off the sprues. It's time consuming, it's tedious, and I just want to get in there and build. Um, but since uh, I don't want to do that over and over again, then I tend to just clean it all up one time, just pay my dues, <laughs> get stuff cleaned up, and then move on. Um, essentially, everything's going to be painted this black. We're going to mirror kind of the 
what was already done by the um, builder. And then the, the sides were going to weather a little bit and then the top is going to get heavily faded. Um, other than that, that's about it. And it looks like, sorry, it looks like there is a standpipe here for when the engines pull up. Now, the standpipe, this this uh, um, this water uh, spigot that the engines will come in and fill up their tenders with water, that does not have to sit next to the uh, the water tower. This can sit closer to the engine facilities where say for example there's a, a sanding facility there's a there could even be some diesel uh, facility uh, stuff too this doesn't have to this can run underground through pipes and this can sit off off the main line but we'll want to keep it somewhere close because we like the look of that so but that's about it so let's get to cleaning up parts and then we'll start the assembly phase Okay, so we are starting to do the cleanup, and I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what's involved in case you either don't do a very good job with it, or don't like to do it, or whatever, you want to see how I do it. So what we're going to do is essentially um, clean up the items that are on the sprues. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Some people will just tear the stuff off and twist it off and, you know, go with what they get. Other people are very meticulous. There's a couple different tools. Um, obviously, you want to use a sharp blade and be careful because this will cut, uh, give you a very serious cut. Um, that being said, I always seem to manage to nick myself, so even I'm not all that careful. Um, I use a pair of rail nippers. Uh, there is a tool made just for separating a part from a sprue, and I don't have one of those, so I use this just because it does. It is a bypass cutter, and what that means is the blade will um, is slightly offset from each other, and it will uh, give you a flush cut. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with an easy piece and you can see what I'm doing is having the blade cut perpendicular to the edge to or sorry to the the surface so I want to get a nice straight flush cut and that means not that much filing and not that much carving with an exacto knife or sanding or whatever tools you happen to use. All right, so our first piece is officially cut. All right, so what we want to do is we want to clean this up now. Now there's a couple little areas where we've just cut and you can see that it's a kind of a white edge in the plastic here. So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. And that corresponds to the three locations that uh, that this piece was attached to the sprue. Now, I tend to use a X-Acto knife to clean this up. And then after that, I will use either sanding paper or a file. Generally, I'll use a file. So you can pick up a set of very small modeling files, not that much. I know Micromark has tons of stuff on there. so. That tends to be the go-to place. Um, some of the other hobby folks, they can help you out as well. The other thing I use are glasses. And part of this is age, and part of this is just I want to see as close as possible what I'm doing. So I'll keep my blade flat against this thin um, edge, perpendicular to this edge, and I'm just going to kind of get the high stuff off and all that means is that I'm just not gonna I'll do it in both directions too all that means is I'm not gonna have to file that much and then I'll take my I'll take my file and I'll lay it flat against the entire surface 
So it's going to take down that high spot and you can use your reading glasses or whatever you want to use. Um, I'll, whatever I do, I'll tend to do in both directions. I won't do it just in one direction. But the sense of feel is really what it's going to do for you as far as what you need to be. Okay. Uh, it is easy to take a little bit too much off, like I did there. But once I file this down, there's also something else you can use. Um, you can use a little bit of modeling putty to fill in any gaps if you feel like you did make a very, very horrible mistake. So I got those pretty clean, so I don't really have to file that much. Make sure you get all that dust off. Um, all the plastic dust you want to make sure is off the piece before you start trying to paint it. And if you do make a horrible mistake, you can use some uh, modeling putty. Um, so this is uh, Squadron Products. It used to be Squadron Shop, I believe, um, back years ago. This is a new tube for me. The last tube of putty I threw away, it was the green and I've heard that the white is a little bit uh, less granular than the green. Uh, when I used this versus when I was using the green, uh, that seemed to hold up what I heard. Um, but what I will tell you is you don't need a whole lot of tubes of this. The green tube lasted me 30-something years, I think. So um, this one is going to be around with me for a while. I don't plan on buying a lot more putty. So, but if you do uh, start doing a lot of stuff like down the uh, gap, like down the uh, the center line of say an aircraft body, a fuselage, and the molds aren't made very well and they don't really seem uh, to go together very well, then you may end up using quite a lot of this. So it all depends. So the Walther's kits that I've been working on in these videos. Um, I really haven't used any putty and I may start using more since I have a brand new tube but the last kit I did went together great. There's a couple of spots that I did uh, for putty. Um, not all of that was the mold issue. Some of it was me trimming it up with an X-Acto knife just a little too aggressively. So that's essentially it and when you're done always put the cap back on. I know sometimes I forget to say some of the safety issues but that's definitely one of them. Um, and other than that, um, I make sure that my work area is nice and clean. Again, easy to say, but um, I did spend a fair amount of time organizing everything that I have. And I can show you kind of what I work off of now. And that's essentially what it looks like when I get started with a kit. So I put everything away so it's easily reachable. But I'm telling you, it's worth the time to do it, and it's worth the time to start clean. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and finish cleaning up all these parts, just like you saw. And then after that, we will uh, start the assembly process. Okay, at this point, we've got all of the pieces prepped, finally. It's not that many pieces, it's just I don't look forward to doing that piece of it. Um... And then we have a few pieces of paper towel. All of the pieces grouped kind of by category. The top, the tank, um, the bottom, the legs, and then smaller ladder pieces and stuff. So um, I said there was one of those um, standpipes for the engines to pull up next to. There's actually two in here. So you get two. So there's three pieces. They stand on these little grate sections. And then there's a little piece that holds it in place. So anyway. So now we're going to start assembling the tank and then the legs. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to assemble the tank and I'm going to spray it 
and then I'm going to start adding some of the other pieces, the legs, because sometimes when you get some of these, uh, these intermediate pieces, legs and things, um, it's easier to spray the tank if you've got um, part of it already built, spray that, and that way you don't have to spray in and around the legs so much and make it, um, you know, difficult. And then you're worried about uh, putting too much of a layer on drips and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the tank once it's assembled. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the legs and the cross supports and that type of stuff. Some of, some of the smaller pieces. So I've got everything laid out and grouped. I'm going to go ahead and get assembling. Um, Previously, I had used I've used a number of different kinds of glues, uh, glues made for styrene, a couple of different brands. I've got several different here. A couple from Testers. I think there's an Ambroid in here. Yeah, that one. Uh, three tubes of Testers. Uh, Walther's Goo. This is a rubbery cement. It's really good for uh, things that won't stick um, if it's super glue uh, resistant or uh, styrene glue resistant like uh, acetate windows. Uh, uh, Walther's Goo is really good for doing that. It's kind of a rubbery sort of cement. But really all I use anymore for plastic is uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. This stuff, if you put, it, it comes in a little brush. It's a little square container very small brush you wipe it onto one piece wipe it onto the other piece very thin if you leave it really thin it's going to evaporate and it's going to disappear um, so um, go ahead and put it on both pieces and you know don't let it overflow onto the model just like you would any cement um, but then once you uh, hold it together for say 30 seconds or so and it's going to fuse the plastic pieces together. Um, this stuff does smell really strong, so you want to use this in a well-ventilated area, or you can make yourself ill, get headaches, and uh, that type of thing. So we're going to go ahead and assemble the tank, spray it, assemble some of the other pieces onto it, and then give it a final coat. Um, and then we'll start worrying about weathering. All right, it's time to weather the water tank. We're gonna use two different methods. The bottom of the tank gets a coat of rust colored paint, then wetted and sprinkled with salt. And then we're gonna finish with a coat of flat, of flat black. And the flat black shouldn't stick to wherever the particles of salt have, are sticking. The top was painted the same rust color as the bottom. And then given a coat of two light coats of hairspray, and then we completed the flat black. So now when we wet the top of the tank and start to go over it with a toothbrush or a toothpick or any of, our, any of the tools that we have, we can even use an X-Acto knife if we want to, um, we're gonna be able to wear off any of the black paint that we want to once the underlying coat of hairspray um, reacts with the water it'll allow the hairspray to loosen up and then that top coat of black paint will loosen up as well giving us a different type of chipping effect so we're going to take it easy on this tank because we don't want to have to repeat this however two different styles of weathering on this tank we'll see which one looks better which one we like better and which one's more applicable to either the top surface or the underside. All right, so let's take a look at the results. The bottom, as you remember, was covered in uh, the salt method. So it was essentially a base coat of color that we wanted to have show through, then cover it with water and salt, let that dry, and then finish it with the final color of the tank, which is just going to be black. So just wanted to point out a couple of things. So what you'll notice is 
there's a few sections that got a lot of kind of a little pock mark. So you can see that. Let me see if I can turn it around. Uh, there is a little bit of flaking because we did, in addition to use salt, we did use a little bit of hairspray. So when some of the water accumulated in certain areas, it did tend to flake off in a little bit bigger pieces. But essentially, the salt gives us a very pockmarked look. So this would be good for steel sides of girders and things like that where we want to see uh, rust just starting. And then we can still go and add additional pigments on top of this too if we want to make it stand out. So essentially that's what the salt is going to look like. Alright, so let's look at the top of the tank. So the top of the tank looks very different. So the top of the tank, while there is some spots of flaking, there's also, we are able to get some wider areas of flaking as well. We couldn't do this with the salt. So they're definitely two different techniques and they give us two completely different results. But if you'll notice here in the center screen, let me see if I can focus this for you guys. Um, it looks like the chunks of paint are actually peeling up off the surface. We can't get this by brush painting details. It would just look like paint on paint. But this really looks like this stuff is peeling off, which we're not simulating because it really is. We are actually peeling paint away from the top of the tank. So once we get this uh, with the ladders put in place um, and the stilts um, and put on the base, um, it's going to look like that tank's been there a while. And what's interesting is the top of the tank is going to be less noticeable to the folks on the ground, but we'll see it because those who are responsible for painting the tank might maybe not notice that the top of the tank is just really needs a paint job. And then we're going to go ahead and finish mounting everything. I even did the, I'm trying to apologize for bouncing around, but the feet, I also um, did the hairspray technique and then scraped away a little bit. And you can see they're black steel feet, but you can see the rust underneath it. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of this on the legs, but the legs are gonna be underneath the tank a little bit, so maybe they'll be a little more shaded. So anyway, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I can see there's uses for both of these, and I actually kind of like having two different techniques on the same tank. So we're gonna go ahead and continue assembling this, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, at this point I have put the remaining pieces on. There really wasn't that many. Um, these cross supports here, the ladder, and then the fuel, uh, the water gauge down this side. Uh, those have been added. Other than that, um, I just kind of put some paint on these standpipes. I didn't really do anything fancy. Just kind of a silver base, concrete color here, and flat black. And then I added some India ink inside the grate and then painted the tops of the grates. Uh, just kind of a um, steel color, I believe was the actual name of the color. So we're going to call this project finished. And we're going to move this from the project shelf to the done shelf. So after using the salt technique, the salt actually left a little bit of a residue, kind of made it look like it had faded out in the weather. Um, also the hairspray technique, um, the rest of the black around it got this kind of this um, appearance like the remaining paint looked like it had started to kind of peel a little bit. And um, so the whole tank got this appearance that it had actually been out in the weather. So I didn't apply any type of chalks or anything. 
I thought the tank looked pretty good by the time we got done with the entire weathering process. All right, other than actually mounting the steel water tower to the layout and covering it with some sort of ground cover, so just the footer show, that's really all that we have left. So this is the end of episode 31. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate comments, so please leave those if you have them. Uh, also, like, dislike, and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm actually working on a couple of projects all at the same time. So this is one of about three right now that I have. So I should have another one um, coming out here any day, probably the next 24 hours, I think. So, and then there's one right behind that one. So anyway, I appreciate you guys viewing and take care.